Hey everybody, this is Claire, and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores or I go to estate sales or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist and I try to find things that I think are interesting or that I think are aesthetically pleasing or that it just kind of appeal to me in some way. And I try to find out as much as I can about them and then tell you guys about them. So here's what I've got to say. So this probably looks far more impressive on camera than it actually is. It's incredibly um, sparkly. Which I'm sure is an intentional part, of, an intentional part of the actual effect of the print. Um, this is a small plate. I'm not sure I really call it large enough to be a dinner plate. Uh, but this is this is kind of interesting, basically because I see this all the time in thrift stores. <laughs> but uh, hold on a second, let's uh, measure it up first. Yeah, it's about let's say eight and a quarter inches across. Um, I'll try to get the height like three quarters of an inch at best <laughs> now so the the okay so i bought this for two dollars at the thrift store okay and i actually made a mistake because you see that chip right there yeah that's a problem i didn't do the thing i normally do which is run my hands around and this one's actually kind of hard to see you can like hard to feel if you actually if you're the wrong angle you're not going to feel that there you got to actually be on that side as opposed to that side so i but i know i didn't do it in this case i should have picked that up and i didn't and i ended up buying it for two dollars even though my policy is that i don't buy damaged stuff <sighs> yeah not great so anyway so why did i buy this i i bought this because i wanted to do a video on the sandwich last specifically and this is not something i really ever pick up and it's not so it's not really going to be a thing unless i basically buy some for the purposes of telling you guys about it. So I wanted to tell you about it because this is one uh this is an anchor hawking pattern. Um it's probably from the 1970s. Anchor hawking were doing this pattern for a very long time and this is a type called sandwich lass or the sandwich pattern. And this is really interesting stuff um and I think it's worth talking about simply because I see it all the time. Like I, I see so much of this stuff in thrift stores and it's kind of nice and sparkly and everything and it's very easy to collect if you're into this kind of thing definitely go ahead and collect it this stuff is nice you know but people might be misled into thinking what it could be which is actual sandwich last from the 19th century which is definitely not what it is um there's there's a story behind this but cool thing is i've got more stuff to show you here I also picked up this bowl in the same pattern for 99 cents just in case you're wondering like how common this stuff is like i could have picked up some glasses as well and i didn't <laughs> i thought this would be enough the bowl is actually all in one good in you know in better shape it's all in one piece it does not sparkle the same way as this does i think this is probably produced for a little bit later again anchor hockey we're doing this pattern for a very very long time so put that over there now, the interesting thing about this is that you can see the main elements of the pattern. It has this amazing stippling. All these little kind of beaded areas, basically. And then these big swooping floral areas and the big flowers in the middle. Anytime I ever see these big flowers, I was just like, yep, that's the anchor hawking pattern. It's like, it gives it away every time. They did it in several different colours as well. They did, like, I think a green and pink. This one is the clear. This is the one I definitely see most often. I think they actually did it in forest green and ruby red as well and the forest green one is a kind of a little bit harder to find so with all of this being said i see the clear a lot i have never seen the ruby red or the forest green and apparently the forest green pattern for for anchor hawking sandwich is quite rare so i'll have to maybe look into that if i ever do spot it chances are if i do i'm just going to say like yeah okay i'm going to just buy it and you know see what see where we're at with it now as well as that, I also got these. And I've actually got two bowls here. To be honest, I should have, I think I bought them as a set. I probably should have only gotten one if I could possibly manage it. And you can see that it's also a kind of a sandwich glass pattern. A little bit similar to, you know, anchor hawking or what have you. But a little bit plainer in the middle, I guess. So these are anchor hawking. This is by KIG Indonesia. This is modern. Probably from the 70s, maybe a little bit later than that, like 60s or 70s. This is definitely modern reproduction. This is a modern kind of essentially sandwich glass 
like so basically a manufacturer putting together a pattern in this the style of sandwich glass and producing it for you know modern modern buyers but anyway what has all this got to do with basically sandwich glass in general okay let's let's talk <laughs> So, so here's the thing, sandwich glass, if you actually go looking for it, like basically if you just do a straight search for sandwich glass, what you're likely to see is the set, like the, the patterns that were produced from about the 1920s up to maybe like the 1980s um, and also random stuff like whatever that is, <sighs> make of that what you will. A few different examples here, there's Anchor Hawking again. There's a few nice ones here as well. You can I think at the top here is that is Anchor Hawking in green. Very nice. Now, so what's actually cool about Sandwich Glass? Okay, apart from the fact that there's like there's maybe like four big companies. I think Anchor Hawking and Indiana and maybe Duncan Miller. Maybe, I think Westmoreland. If I think I might have read as well, all of them did like a version of the Sandwich Glass pattern. Um, it's technically called the Sandwich Pattern, not strictly speaking Sandwich Glass. And they were producing it from like the 1920s up to like 1980s. And the thing is, is that they were basing it on the 19th century stuff. And the 19th century sandwich glass was actually came specifically from the Boston and Sandwich Glass Company in Sandwich, Massachusetts. And the contemporaries in the same kind of area. And they all did this kind of like this kind of idea. And I've, like the the basis of the pattern essentially was that they did these enormous like beautiful floral designs now this is like pressed glass okay and oh that chip now the point of it is, is that the point of that stippling is that it basically hid in like impurities or imperfections in the glass because at the time it was kind of hard to produce clear glassware okay so bearing in mind that this is what like you know just your plain jane vintage sandwich glass looks like what i have here is a picture of the stuff from the 19th century and this is in a museum <laughs> dish probably by the boston sandwich glass company sandwich massachusetts 1830 1850 pressed lead glass and you can see that that is just boy that's incredibly elaborate <laughs> like there's a lot going on here okay and not so much here and i bump the camera again okay so <laughs> So basically what we say about this is that like the real stuff that would have been produced from about the 1820s up to the, the 1880s, it was big, heavy, like elaborate stuff like this. It was ridiculously expensive. It is all like the real stuff, stupidly expensive antiques. Like I'm pretty sure I have never seen anything like this in a thrift store. And I've been looking and I kind of sort of know what to look for. Maybe. I know it's not. I know it's not this. I know this is definitely the anchor hawking pattern. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's what you want it, 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 considering the amount of sandwich glass I see in a thrift store you think maybe I get lucky and find maybe a piece of this uh, no I don't think it's going to happen but far more likely to see the you know the stuff from the 70s but anyway I just I wanted to tell you guys about this just so at least you kind of know what to look for like especially when you see those giant flowers that's anchor hawking all day every day and and this stuff here, like, I really shouldn't have bought two bowls, but, you know, here we are. Like, this is still, it's still kind of nice. And as you can see, it's got some similarities here to the big kind of swirl floral designs and stippling. And it looks a lot like, you know, it's got the same kind of elements as the stuff from the 19th century. But like in this case, this does not even have a moss ring, for example. Like, that is the edge of the bowl, of the plate here. And if it was actually old, it should obviously have a, a moss ring for being moved across the table, you know. Does this have it? Probably not. Hard to say because that rim is kind of hard to see. If I look up close myself. Yeah, it does. It's still a little bit. So I think I would make my guess 1960s, 1970s is probably pretty good. How about this? Yeah, a tiny bit as well. Yeah, I don't know. But but anyway, like this, uh, no, it has no real evidence of age. This is kind of pretty and it's nice that they did it in pink. 
you know, but not really worth a whole hell of a lot. I think I bought the two of these for like three dollars. So, okay, having said all of that, what exactly would you do with this stuff if you have it? Well, first of all, if you're in a thrift store, don't buy the clear stuff. <laughs> like, you can happily leave this on the shelf. As far as I know, no one collects it, no one really, really wants it. It's too common. If you see stuff like this in pink, I did look up the prices for this. It's not really worth anything. And so unless people are looking for replacements, I don't think this is worthwhile as well. I'm not, I don't think, I I, I think I probably wasted my money. I, thankfully, I only spent $3 for it. Um, For these small little bits and pieces, again, same thing, same pattern. I think unless you, like the clear stuff, you can absolutely dismiss. Maybe if you see some of the nicer patterns in different colors, and like, and the de definitely the anchor hocking in either forest red or, ru sorry, forest green or ruby red. And that is, those are the really, really deep, dark colors. Um, I have another video on anchor hocking vases where you actually can see an example of that if you want. Like, that's worth getting? Not so much. So, here is uh, maybe a little bit of a lesson, I guess, for the day. Like, sandwich lasts, not really worth your one unless you somehow strike it unbelievably lucky and find something from the 19th century. And, well, all I can say is good luck with that. I spent a lot of time in thrift stores. I've seen nothing so far. So these are my small joyful things for the day. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.